and welcome to the Fertility Conversations podcast. The goal of this podcast is to create more awareness about infertility and to provide support to people trying to conceive. Thank you for listening today, and we hope you will be encouraged. And now, here is your host, Ola. Welcome to another episode of Fertility Conversations. Today, we are joined by a lovely guest, Samantha Diamond, the founder and CEO of Bird and Bee. She joins us from Toronto, Canada to share her fertility journey and also tell us all about Bird and Bee and all the products and services they provide to support the TTC community. So welcome, Samantha, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me here. I really appreciate everything you do for the fertility community. So it's an honor to join you here. Thank you so much. We love you and all that you do as well. Um, so to start off, please tell us uh, a little bit about yourself. I always, I always struggle to find the words <laughs> to talk about myself, but I'll, I'll tell you a bit about me and, and the, I guess the life I, I'm living right now. I, I am a mother of three children. Um, I live in obviously Toronto, Canada. We we just talked about how our weather is not the most ideal at all mm-hmm. times. So uh, battling that today specifically. Um, and I have gone through my own fertility journey, probably similar to many of the journeys of, of the people listening to your podcast. And it really inspired me to make a change firstly within my own life uh, and then it inspired me to help educate others and, and to create products for other people who are going through the journey that might make their lives just a little bit easier along the way. That's great and of course you know you highlighted the fact about your own fertility journey as well and uh, wonder if you can share a little bit about that and your journey to parenthood to your three lovely children. <laughs> yes. Um, so I, um, my, my past life, my past work life, I was in PR and marketing. I ran a PR agency, uh, mostly in, uh, for beauty clients here in Canada. Mm-hmm. And um, as, as I was going through my own like career journey and growing my family, um, I started, I began to struggle with Uh, fertility and with pregnancy loss. And uh, this was sort of happening at a time in in my career where I was really starting to notice packaging and where I was really starting to notice confusion in in the aisles. Um, So by day, I'm speaking with journalists about beauty products and I'm, you know, have tons of sample boxes and I'm seeing all the pictures on, on all of the materials. And then, you know, after work, I'm hitting the pharmacy to grab my, you know, millions of vitamins and my pregnancy tests, ovulation tests. And it sort of clicked at that moment that I was going through the uh, struggle in my journey that like all of this packaging and all of the names on the products, they just, they really didn't reflect where I was at. Um, and, they, and they didn't really reflect a lot of the other people that I that I knew in the space that were going through something a bit challenging, um, a lot of the boxes had pictures of babies all over them, and you know, for some people who are going through loss or who have been trying for quite some time, uh, that kind of imagery can be triggering. Um, it's sort of just unnecessary to to have there. So that was like idea number one and sort of spark number one. Like, how can we change? the face of fertility? How can we change the way that these products look? And then as I continued through my journey and I um, was meeting with different doctors and uh, naturopathic doctors as well, I was introduced to the supplement space on the fertility side that was like over and above just a regular prenatal vitamin that you're supposed to be taking. I was being educated on various antioxidants and how they support egg quality and sperm quality as well, and the importance of taking care of both sides of the equation along the way, and also the impact that aging has on egg quality and um, chances of success and frequency of loss. And I had 
similar to many people, you, you hear about the biological clock. This is something that's talked about them um, from a cultural perspective, but I don't think that I really truly understood the impact that aging has at, and at not such a late stage in life has on yeah. our eggs and our sperm. So I'm learning all these things about supplements. I'm then going from my, you know, my naturopath's office to go and find all these supplements because there was a lot end up with maybe 15 bottles of different vitamins and, and um, minerals and antioxidants on my counter and sorting through that on a daily basis and having to reorder them. And I'm thinking, okay, like spark, spark idea number two, there's got to be an easier way yes. to get people all of the things that they need from a supplement perspective on their fertility journey without them having to like, you know, spend the equivalent of a second job looking yeah. for all these products and then paying for all these products. Like the cost was astronomical. It was hundreds of dollars a month in supplements plus the cost of the naturopath appointment, which is quite, it's, it's a few hundred dollars just to see them once. So wow. I thought, you know, there's gotta be a way to make this easier. And then spark number three, idea number three came again as just part of the education al along the way on my journey and just really understanding the impact of aging on, um, you know, the loss, success rates and all these things and, mm. and trying to understand why early testing wasn't really a part of our sort of educational upbringing when it came to reproductive health. Like in school, we're taught, you know, in, 10th grade, if we have sex, we're going to get pregnant. Um, yeah. and, and that, and that might be the case. That might be the case in your teens. Um, even then your, your chances of getting pregnant per month are in and around 25, maybe 30% chance. Um, but you know, as we get older, that's not the case anymore. And there are such simple things that we can do to just try to see if we have any of these red flags or or try to plan a little bit ahead. And we don't necessarily even need to start with fertility appointments and blood work. Like there are things we can do at home as step one. Yeah. So that's sort of, of these three things came together at the same time. And I said, you know, I think that this is something, there's something here. I think there's a lot of people struggling that, that might, really respond to a brand that's making things easier and speaking to them in a way that um, is supportive and inclusive and, you know, not always super serious and medical and sterile um, that likes to, you know, have a little fun while educating um, that can make fertility not look so medical and sterile. Like our, do all of our supplements need to come in a million different bottles? Could it, could it just be something cute that we could put on our, on our bedside table and, and feel a sense of normalcy about like, there are ways that we can, you know, talk to people, educate people um, about things to look for early on. Like, could we not just make this a little bit of a easier and better experience for people? And so Burden B was born. Wow. Well done. And I see that, you know, from, from you speaking, I was just like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you highlight so many issues with the supplements and some of the supplements, you know, you're talking about the fact that pictures, even on, with babies on them on certain products. And I assume that people might think that that's encouraging, but in reality, it's not because you're not even sure at what stage the person is at and coming to see that on um, a test or, or in a supplement, it can be, like you said, very triggering. Um, and even for me, I've, I've had like bottles and bottles of supplements that I have like, almost like, it looks like a huge makeup bag filled with so many. And I'm thinking, you know, when you want to use it, you're like, okay, which one have I used? Which one I have, haven't I used, you know, and you just, there's so many and you're not even sure which one actually applies to you or not. So it's great to see you create something so much easier and you know, more user-friendly. 
Thanks. We we heard from our the naturopaths and the fertility doctors that we um, work with and that who, who were formulating our product with us. Uh, they they tell stories about patients just coming into their office with a grocery bag full of things. <laughs> they dump it on the table and say like, okay, this is what I'm taking. What do I need more of? What should I do? And the doctors all say like, that, whoa, this is, yeah. you literally are taking everything that the internet told you to take all at once. And that's not great for you either. You know, there are vitamins you can get too much of, and there are vitamins that don't apply and making sure that you're not going overboard. And again, it's part of it is, is the mental load of fertility. Like yeah. thinking about all of these things all the time, like there's even just simplifying, these are the essentials that I need to take. These are, these are the supplements that work. These are in the doses that are recommended by fertility specialists. You can stop at least that part of the Google rabbit hole mm. and, and trust that you're getting what you need it's formulated specifically that like some of our supplements are, are formulated specifically for fertility patients. So they don't interact with your fertility drugs. Um, it's supposed to be something that makes your journey just a tiny bit easier. And I always say, even, even for the people who have had great success with their fertility journey, their fertility treatments, I don't know anyone who's come out on the other side of it, even with a, you know, large number of, of children and said, that was a great experience and I'd like to do that again. Yeah. That's, that's not, that is not often the result. People are thrilled with their results often. Um, obviously there are occasions where, where things don't go their way, but when they do, it's not the experience that was the great part for them. So <laughs> if we're able to just do even something small um, to make that part a little bit simpler, I think that that can go a long way in, in again, just easing the, that load of, and stress that you're taking on along the way. Definitely. And with your supplements, how, like, how has it resolved that whole issue of having a whole load of different supplements to use? Well, we have, so we've solved the problem in a few ways. What, what we've done is we've created a bunch of different formulas for different people at different stages of their journey. And the first sort of element of how we simplify it is um, anyone who's interested in either a preconception supplement. So before you start trying or while you're trying prenatal mm -hmm. supplement for when you're pregnant, even postpartum, which we're about to launch soon. You can come on the website, fill out um, a little quiz, and our quiz will match you with the right supplement for you based on, you know, how long you've been trying, your age, whether whether you're male or female um, assigned at birth, and you that takes the first part of the guesswork out. You don't necessarily need to pay to see a naturopath because we've sort of done that matching for you with what you're supposed to be taking. And then the second piece of it is really putting together all of the different things that uh, you'd be recommended to be taking in the day. And we put them into these single daily sachets. All you do oh. is rip off your little daily sachet, pop whatever is in there into your hand and take it after a meal. Super important to take it after you eat. It's great for nutrient absorption. And it also makes sure that you don't feel sick from the vitamins. Um, mm. And then you're done. And that's it. And you can rest easy till the next day. Um, so we make it super easy. It's great for travel. I was just away with a friend last weekend and I, I take um, the prenatal, the base prenatal, which we call our prenatal for eggs. I take them every day because it's a great just general multivitamin. And mm. I took my three little sachet squares, put them in my carry on and that was all I needed. So super, super easy. That sounds amazing. I love the fact that you've actually even done it to daily sachets. That just makes it so much easier. Uh, and it's better for the environment because the amount of plastic that we're using in your monthly roll of sachets is just the equivalent of one small bottle uh, wow. in plastic. So 
So if, if you're someone who was like me, who's on a fertility journey and they've been recommended, you know, 10 different agents, that's like 10 times the amount of plastic that you're using per month just for your bottles of supplements. So it's actually great for the environment as well. And it can be recycled in a lot of municipalities. Well, that's really, really amazing. And, and, and you know, I actually love the fact as well that you're also tailoring the uh, supplements based on people's uh, specific needs, you know? So you're not just taking what one friend seems to be taking without you knowing if the friend has a different diagnosis or different um, issue as opposed to, you know, so it's actually good that you're doing that and actually it's, it's much better. So you know that you're taking what's actually good for you. Right. Because relevant. how many how many times do we see online like people listing out their own protocols and then <laughs> yeah. other people are like, well, I'm not taking that. Like probably because you're not supposed to be. Um yeah. but a lot of a lot of people like the the toughest part I think about fertility, well, I, I there's a lot of tough parts, so maybe this isn't the toughest, but one of the toughest parts of the fertility journey is that feeling or, or sense of um, lack of control. You don't have control yeah. over your journey. You don't have control over your outcomes and you're trying to gain that sense of control by, by any sort of thing that you can yeah. you know, dictate in, in your own journey. So if you can sort of dictate like, I need to take all these things. All these people are taking these things that gives you, you know, that might give you more of a sense of control as one example, but it's not necessarily what your doctor wants you to be taking um, or what, you know, you, you don't necessarily know what agents might interact with certain fertility medication. Um, or naturopaths give a lot of examples all the time of patients who are taking, you know, they might be taking estrogen, but then they're taking the supplement that's suppressing est estrogen. And those exactly. two things shouldn't be taken together, even though somebody else might have that as part of their protocol. Yes, definitely. Well said. So thank you for, for uh, you know, creating supplements that can be tailored to people's individual needs. That's very important. Thank you. And I think it's also just super important and something that I, I, I truly learned on, on my journey is that the, the preconception phase, so when we're getting ready and when we're trying, it's not just for females, people with eggs and, and women. This is for people with sperm as well. And, yes. you know, from the, from the science, we know that an embryo is half sperm and half egg. So it wouldn't entirely make sense to just focus on half of that. You want to be focused on making sure that both are um, well, well taken care of and optimized in terms of their own health and quality. And the same goes from the, the prenatal testing. You know, it's, it's not enough to just go in for a consult or for blood work for the person with eggs. The person with sperm should be getting that semen analysis and blood work, um, if that's part of the journey, right up front. Um, rule out any issues right away instead of, you know, trying at home for two years, finally getting in front of a doctor, only to find out that, you know, the the partner with sperm didn't actually have sperm in his semen. Yeah. And the, the whole two years could have been avoided with um, like just even an at-home uh, semen analysis where they could have found out we've got an issue here, time to get in to see a doctor right away. Exactly. Thank you so much for mentioning that. I think that's really, really important because like you said, so much focus sometimes is on the woman and it takes two. We need both eggs and sperm to be top quality. So thank you so much for highlighting that as well. Well, it's, it's our pleasure. I think the education piece is something that's personally very important to me. And I know it's very important to our team and our mission because I don't think we are adequately educated on this um, no. formally and I think that this type of education is sort of something that we're we're gathering as we go again Dr. Google has done a lot of educating <laughs> for the people in this community and I think it's really important uh, to provide a really well vetted source when it comes to a lot of this uh, fertility education like it needs some of this really does need to come from doctors and specialists in the space who yeah. have spent a lot of time studying this and, and also even something as simple as um, 
you know, when you hear about a study that was done on some something specific in the fertility space, it's really important to understand what a good study is and what an irrelevant study is. You know, it might not make exactly. sense if a study was done on, you know, four raccoons, but <laughs> they had a, a great result. Like that doesn't really apply. Um, yeah. It's the same thing, actually, we... We went through this um, when deciding what type of CoQ10 to use because a lot of the, the chatter in the fertility community talks about ubiquinol versus ubiquinone. Yes. The initial studies that were done on the ubiquinol were actually done, uh, and, and the ones that were originally used as evidence for um, CoQ10 infertility um, were actually done on a small set of elderly male patients that were also allowed to take um, their, their daily medication, like it could be for cholesterol or whatever. So these things actually interfere with results and you know, a, a set of 60 something, 11, 60 something male patients doesn't necessarily apply to someone who's in their thirties and female and trying to have a baby. And, and perhaps that was the best science at the time and that's fine, but there's better science now. So yeah. we should be really just looking at studies and making sure that the people who are analyzing the studies are trained to do so and who have that medical background to really explain, you know, what's up to us in a language that makes sense. Exactly. And that we can understand. Yes. Yeah. Well said. And in terms of your products that you provide, you have the supplements. What other fertility supporting products do you provide? So we just launched our at-home tests, our first three at-home tests a couple months ago. And um, I think it's important to understand just from, a, from an education perspective, again, sort of what we can use these tests for. So we have our early results pregnancy test that's pretty you know, self-explanatory. It's, um, they're, they're very, very sensitive. So they can detect pregnancy up to five days before uh, a missed period. And oh, wow. people have really, really been loving them because they are so, so sensitive. Um, and we have our ovulation test strips and these will help obviously to identify a fertile window for people who are trying. But what I think is really interesting about ovulation test strips is that earlier education about um, your cycle and how or how your cycle might not be like, you know, quotation normal and, and right. what that means for fertility. And I personally, so I have PCOS and I, I learned about that very, very early on. Most people don't, most people do not know that they have PCOS until they've been struggling to conceive, seeing a fertility doctor and are, are diagnosed with it after quite some time. And if we were able to learn really early on the signs and symptoms of something like PCOS, and I say that specifically because it is the number one cause of infertility and also the most treatable, and it affects one in, in 10 people with eggs. So it's very, very, very common. If I was taught really early on how to use uh, ovulation test strips and what to look for, I would have found out even earlier that I was having issues with my cycle. And I think a lot of people could benefit from that education too. So. You know, if you're taking ovulation test strips, even before you're trying to get pregnant, you know, if the tests are never positive or if the tests are always positive, that's a red flag. Go see your doctor, get some blood work and, and figure out what might be going on. Wow. That's really, really helpful. And it's um, easy and it's inexpensive and it's something that you can be doing as something, you know, proactive. Exactly. And early detection or early, knowing, knowing early can definitely, because with infertility, oftentimes things can take so long with you even getting to a doctor in the first place. So knowing, I mean, getting to use ovulation uh, test strips and identifying that something is perhaps off can, can um, really help and take off some, some of that time waiting. Totally. And, it, and it's the same thing with the at-home sperm test, which I think is the coolest thing ever. You can actually yeah. test your sperm quality at home. So ours, our at-home sperm test tests for modal sperm concentration. And what's super cool about it is that firstly, you, you get to do it 
inexpensively at home in privacy, figure out if you might have an issue and then you, you can be sure that next steps need to be taken. But you get a video sent to your phone of your moving uh, sperm. Oh, and wow. yeah, you can send that to your doctor. You can like put it up as your TikTok background, whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> you can keep it private. Um, I just think that that's the coolest thing ever. And you can actually track improvement to your sperm quality over time. So what we would recommend if someone um, might have a low quality result is obviously to book a consult with a specialist, a fertility specialist or a reproductive urologist, and then get started right away on those prenatals with antioxidants. And you should see after, you know, two to three months, there should be some improvement. Sperm are really, really easy to measure in terms of the, the different parameters that you'd be looking at for quality. Um, they're easy to measure because obviously you can you can get them out of the body. You can look at them under a microscope and you can measure the, these types of things with testing. Um, yeah. So it's been very cool to see some of the doctors that we've been working with come to us and say, you know, our patient's sperm parameters are like doubling or tripling mm. after <laughs> three months on, on the antioxidants. Um, wow. It's, you know, it they really, it truly works. Antioxidants are amazing for um, egg and sperm quality support. That's, that's excellent. And so for your supplements, you have both the ones for female and male. Yes, we do. And I, I would say like the biggest difference or the biggest like piece of education around prenatal vitamins is that there's a big difference between prenatal vitamins and preconception supplements. So if you go to the drugstore and you see like whatever brand prenatal vitamin, that's got your basics in it. So your folic acid, um, usually uh, an iron, calcium, like your basic vitamins and nutrients that you need to support a healthy pregnancy and, right. and to support a, a, a baby growing. What's different about preconception supplements is that they actually focus on the quality of your egg and sperm before you conceive. Uh. And that's where all of the antioxidants come in. So they actually do impact the the gametes themselves and they prevent damage to the eggs and the sperm DNA. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Very important to know the difference. Yeah. <laughs> and to actually know what to go for. Yeah. Thank you. And I, actually when you were talking, talking about the home uh at home test and I wonder, I was like, my husband would love that because I think he hates the whole idea of going to the clinic and it just never feels like he's comfortable. It's just weird. So having been able to do it at home is actually excellent. Because you know it's just more comfortable, right? Like you're in your home. Totally, and that's not to say it's a replacement for the clinic, but it's certainly a first step for a lot of people. We've heard yeah. from our customers that it's been hard to get their partners to actually go into the clinic. So this is something that you can start off with to understand. Yeah. You know, if if there is an issue, this is your this is your big red flag again. Here is your issue. You've got to go and get um, a workup from a doctor. What we've also heard from our community um, from an accessibility perspective, not only for people who are geographically located um, sort of far away from any in-person clinics, um, but also from an accessibility perspective when we talk about inclusivity, um, there's, there is a lot of people in the LGBTQ2 community um, and very specifically in the trans community that haven't felt super comfortable in the fertility space. So right. being able to do some of this like very early screening at home might sort of get them a little bit more comfortable before they do need to take that next step to go into clinic. And again, it's the same thing with the supplements and, and just sort of the way we name products. We try to use the biological sex terms. Um, we talk right. about sperm, we talk about eggs, and, and we talk about male and female. So we try not to use gender, men and women anywhere right. in our um, product labeling or, or materials, because, you know, it doesn't really matter to us, you know, how you identify as if you can, you know, you can build a family however you want. It, it is not based at all, in our opinion, on gender. So we just try to focus on uh, the body parts and, and not anything else. That's great. And that makes it more inclusive and for everyone, really. So that's, yeah. that's great. Yeah. 
And for people listening and wanting to purchase your supplement or ovulation test kits or even the sperm test, uh, what is the best way to access that? And is it available for, why is it also available? So anyone can purchase our products if they live in US and Canada. And you can visit our website, birdandbee.com. And it's just B with one E because we like to be edgy like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, and so as well, in terms of reaching, if anyone wants to reach out to you, it's also best to reach out on the website or on Instagram. Either or, you can okay. um, come through our website and our customer service is unparalleled. So there's an email uh, on our site to reach out to us and happy to answer questions. You can reach us on Instagram at birdbeco and follow along for a lot of education uh, tips and sometimes a fun reel or two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And yes. uh, yeah, feel free to DM us there with any questions as well. Perfect. And I'll also put all your details in terms of contact details in the show notes as well. So that way people can uh, reach out to you. And just looking back, you know, you've learned so much in your journey and you've done so much now, you know, from your own journey to support the TTC community and to help make things easier for others who are trying to conceive. Um, so looking back at... 18 year old Samantha, knowing all that you know now, what would you tell her? Oh, that's a great question. Mm. Is, is this a question we always think about? Like, if I had only known. Yeah. Um, I I think I think that this is sort of a two-part answer, one maybe part fertility related and one general related. I would mm. say from a fertility perspective, I I I wish I had known how common pregnancy loss was so that I could have been better prepared to manage my own journey. And I wish I had, I wish I had talked about it more earlier on. I wish I had reached out to people or learned, I guess, 18 year old Samantha, I wish I had learned about this as a possibility. And I wish that mental health and uh, therapy were normalized a lot earlier on because that's something that I should have accessed as part of my journey and I didn't. And I think it would have made a huge difference. So so that's what I wish for 18-year-old Samantha on, on a fertility perspective. And then I think from a general life perspective, it would have it, it would have been great to know really early on that I can do hard things because there's been obviously and anybody who's building a business has gone through many many challenges in order to do so and you know we still face challenges every day in various aspects of, of the business and I I wish I had told myself not to doubt my potential I think wow I love that well done and I'm so sorry about your loss. Thank you. Um, I know Thank that you. you mentioned, yeah. I think that's Thank definitely you. something, like I said, we need more awareness about that because people feel so lonely and isolated, right? When no one else speaks about it and you just don't realize how common it is. True. And I think to be honest, having these conversations on podcasts and just with my with my own coworkers, um, and, and talking about it through Bird and Bee has actually been quite healing for me because I never talked about it up until yeah. I had to. Um, so it's it's actually been, the building of the business has also been partly a, a journey of healing for me. That's great. And is there any quote or affirmation that you have found really helpful so far in your journey um, I'd like to share? I hope this isn't too cliche, but I, I, and I, I tell this to my kids every day that we need to lead with kindness. Um, because yes. if we can do that, I think, I think we've done, I think we've done a lot. I think that, um, people are going through a lot 
uh, under the surface. And oftentimes we don't know what other people are going through. And if we can approach every conversation and interaction with kindness first, I think that would go a long way. And I think, you know, we see it even from a, a customer service perspective at, at Bird and Bee when people uh, might reach out, you know, asking a million times about when their product is shipping. Like what, what they're really saying is that they're going through a really tough journey and yeah. this is something that they really need and it's super stressful. And so instead of just, you know, responding with their shipping information, like we need to respond with kindness and, yeah. you know, appreciate what somebody might be going through under the surface and, and as much kindness as you can possibly impart in even just in something like an email goes a long way for people. Yes. I love it. I don't think you, I don't think you can ever say it enough. So, um, I mean, it's really wonderful to hear that. That's what you shared and that you also share with your kids every day. Cause it, like I said, it is very important. We just never know what people are going through at all. So thank you for sharing that. That's really, really helpful. And I think even for us in this journey, if people were more kind, it would definitely go a long way for us all. And I think so, being kind with yourself counts too. I think we need to be yes. kind with ourselves because it's tough and we need to give ourselves a little bit of grace in order to, yes. to keep up that resilience if that's something that, you know, if that's if that applies to your journey and keeping up that resistance, re resilience and, and keeping going is is what you need for your journey, then you've got to show yourself some kindness. Definitely. I don't want to forget ourselves. Thank you. And as a wrap up, as a wrap up, Samantha, are there any words of encouragement that you'd like to share with anyone, person or couple currently trying to conceive? As always, you are not alone. And at no point should you ever feel alone because there are other people who are going through what you're going through, who are there to support you and resources available to lift you up if you are feeling like you're going through something alone. So just know that, um, you know, you have a community waiting for you. And when you're ready to access it, you know, we're all here. Thank you. That's so beautiful. Well said. Thank you so much, Samantha. It has been really lovely having you on here. Such an informative uh, session and very inspiring. Like it's amazing that while going through your journey, you highlighted so many aspects and things that needed to be changed. And you went ahead and made those changes and created options for people, other people trying to conceive. That is really amazing. So Definitely, thank you so much for, for doing that and creating this wonderful product to support us all in the community. It's been amazing having you on here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you for all that you do and all that you are. And we look forward to having you again here in the near future. I hope so. Happy to come back. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week on the Fertility Conversations podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please give us a five-star rating and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at Fertility Conversations. If there are any topics you would like to have discussed, please send an email to fertilityconversations at gmail.com. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode. Thank you again for listening. Take care of yourself and do stay hopeful.